Welcome to This Old Doll. On this episode, we'll be working to produce a track doing both audio and MIDI on a Mac Quattro 700 using an original Pro Tools interface and producing a song that was written on my Akai S3200. But before we start, an introduction. So sometime around last year, I had acquired my first Pro Tools um, four channel interface that interfaces um, via NuBus to the old 68K Max and the early PPC model Macintoshes. This is what's called the SA442 um, audio card. It was typically paired with a 442 audio interface or if you had two of them connected with a TDM piggyback you were able to use the original 888 interface for eight channels on one box, but it was split into two cables, four channels going to each card. Our interface today is just a four channel interface. I'm still working to build a 16 channel interface, but that's going to be a more involved process at this point. And I'm just waiting on some very rare and hard to find items to finish that build. Just to quickly go over some of the hardware in this box, this is a Mac Quadro 700 with a 25 megahertz 68040 processor, 68 megabytes of RAM, 8 gigs of uh, SCSI storage internally with a SCSI 2 SD, and a Pro Tools 442 audio interface. The card is in here, which has a cable that goes to this interface right here. This gives you four channels in and four channels out. Two channels are populated by the Akai S3200. This goes into here, and that will capture the audio that we record from the main stereo outputs onto this 9 gigabyte fuzzy HDD. So now that we've taken a tour of the hardware into things, now we'll do a deeper dive into the software side of things. So for example, on our Mac Quadro 700, we're running um, Macintosh System 7.6. We're running about, as we were talking about earlier, we have 68 megabytes of RAM, which was really unheard of for a machine of this vintage, considering that this machine's from 1991 with 68 megabytes of RAM and all these gigabytes of storage. This was pretty unheard of for this time period. Um, Charlie Clouser on a Reddit forum that um, I uh, talked to him on was basically saying that his uh, ProMaster uh, 660 megabyte hard drive set them back almost two to three thousand dollars when they bought it. And so to have gigabytes like we have right now is just pretty well to think about. I always um, marvel at how they actually achieved the downward spiral on a very similar setup like this with such limited storage. So without further ado, we're gonna boot into um, Opcode Studio Vision Pro Pro. This is the um, DAW of choice for this project today. And the reason why is um, Opcode Studio Vision it featured both audio and MIDI together in the same DAW. Um, Pro Tools for many years, especially for versions one through three, um, did not include MIDI as a part of its core functionality as far as the sequencing goes. So Studio Vision Pro is one of the um, innovative DAWs that actually incorporated both audio and MIDI in the same program. It was very well ahead of its time. And basically was kind of the foundation of what the modern DAW would become. So the song that we're gonna load is this one right here. Just gonna connect the headphone real quick. Okay. 
All right. Um, some of the issues I was having in some of my older um, videos was I was getting a uh, microphone feeding into um, this mic. Um, and by, what I mean by that is um, my monitors were coming through here, so this should help isolate that. So first thing we want to do, um, I had a couple of technical issues to troubleshoot is we're going to see if the, um, the mix down, this is the, um, the pre-recorded um, two-channel stereo that I captured from the Akai S3200 to the Mac. We uh, recorded this two-channel um, stereo to this 35-year-old Mac. And so we're just going to see this plays back. And so it is um, pretty obviously successfully playing back. That's what I wanted to verify. So we're going to mute that mix down channel. And for right now, we're just going to just play the, um, the drums in this track. These are being individually triggered on the Akai S3200. So we'll take out the drums and then we also incorporated a um, 125 beats per minute break at about um, bar 57. Now, something I'll mention about this too is that uh, we're actually monitoring the S3200 directly through the uh, DigiDesign 442. So everything that you're hearing is going through the 442 and then out. So everything that you're hearing is the DigiDesign 442 um, going in and going out on this project. So we're um, using a 35-year-old computer to monitor sound in and out of it. And of course, um, what S3200 project is um, always needing for me personally is at least one test um, program that's been modified for something either melodically or bass-wise. In this case, it's melodic. So that reverb that you're hearing is the uh, built-in reverb of the S3200 that you're hearing in this track. So all the sounds and all the effects are basically um, coming from the Akai S3200 itself. And what we're going to be capturing on the other end is basically the uh, stereo mix down of the sampler. Which um, from a fidelity sound point is um, a bit limited. You don't really have as much control afterwards. And given the fact that we only have four audio channels, four mono audio channels to work with in total, we're basically working with a glorified digital four track with the ability to have our MIDI data and our audio together in the same project. And um, here's some Alpha Juno bells that I sampled. And then we have a 
vocal sample at this point right here. A Juno pad that was um, sampled and processed with N Terra's Infinity. Uh, Juno 60 bass that I had sampled from obviously the Juno 60. It was also um, processed in Infinity so I could get a seamless loop to hold the sustain that sample. And these 303 samples were originally sampled into my Akai S950 so I um, Loaded it into this project just to see what would, just to kind of have a sound to work with. And so this is what the entire song sounds like, um, sequenced by MIDI. So now that you've um, heard everything triggered by MIDI, um, what you ultimately um, can do at this point is you um, say, I want to capture the uh, mix down of this song. We have that right here in this channel here. See if we can get this zoomed in. And there you have it, there is um, the waveform 
or the mix down that we have um, previously recorded. Now let's um, stream the uh, mix down from the SCSI hard drive. And while this is by no means a uh, definitive um, walkthrough of Opcode Studio Vision, this is a very high level overview of what this program is capable of. And as time progresses and future episodes happen, I hope to do a much deeper dive into this. Um, this is a bit very much intended just to be kind of a quick overview of like how this setup works, how it functions. So now you've basically seen the MIDI sequencing with opcode. You've seen audio playback via opcode. Um, later versions of Pro Tools would allow you to use um, TDM, new bus cards, and that's a setup that we don't have right now. So basically, we are, um, if you wanted to do additional processing at this point, you could um, import this song into uh, Sound Designer 2 apply some sound designer effects um, including waves l1 wave c1 um, and uh, you even had waves q10 for sound designer um, basically it was kind of like the old audio suite where it was like basically non-real time um, you could preview it um, before rendering but in order to like hear the whole song you would have to commit to a render with those settings Thank you for turning into this episode of This Old DAW. This was a rather high level overview of the Mac 68K setup that I have with an early Pro Tools setup. You have now seen how it works with audio, MIDI on a high level overview. In future episodes, we'll go into more depth and detail and possibly even do a um, create a song from scratch episode where we see everything done from the beginning to the end. In the until the meantime, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.